What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terrio and today I have an exciting new video for you guys on learning limited and how to get out of it and what you need to understand about it. I get a lot of questions around learning limited and it's important to understand how it affects your account and what you can do to get out of it, how to stay in the active stage and whether or not you should be worried. So before we get started, make sure you hit the thumbs up button below and hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel, posting new videos every other day, just like this one. Let's get started guys. Okay guys, so learning limited. So there's three phases of an ad set. You launch it and initially it starts off in the learning phase right away. So you launch that set, goes to learning, that's it, simple. So after you launch it, it goes into the learning phase and everything, it'll have two kind of paths it'll take over the next few days. It'll either go to active right here, and you're probably getting somewhere around 50 conversion events within that time period to get to active. In order to get to active, you need 50 conversion events within a seven day, so a week window. So if you're optimizing for landing page views, you need 50 landing page views. If you're optimizing for purchases, you need 50 purchases to get into that active stage. Now, learning limited right here, this is when it cannot get into active. So it learns and then it goes straight to learning limited. And the reason why it's going to learning limited is because it's not getting those 50 conversion events. So it's basically telling us that, hey, this ad set is not optimizing anymore it's limited so an ad set when it goes in the active stage it'll continuously optimize and reach new and new people and facebook will continually optimize the performance on that particular ad set whereas learning limited it may start learning and stuff and then it's not getting the amount of data it needs so then it kind of like hey this is the people we're going to target we're just going to hold off on these people and we're just going to stay with these people right here we're not going to go try to reach new people we have you know an audience of 2.1 million people we locked on probably about 200 300 thousand of those people that are actively willing to you know work with our particular ad right there and that's it. We're just going to lock on those people because we're not getting the 50 conversion events. So we're not, we can't go in active where active will continuously optimize and continues to reach new people. Um, we're going to learn limited instead. And it's going to over time degrade performance on that particular ad set. So it's not something you'll see immediately. Like, Hey, I went to learn limited. Now my ad account sucks. No, it's going to be something that you're going to see over time because that ad set won't be able to continuously optimize and reach new more people and continuously grow. It's going to fall short. It's going to stick to the same group of people. It's going to be limited. And you're going to, once you burn through it, it's likely it's just going to start suffering really bad. So depending on your budget, if your budget's five to $10 a day, it might take forever to, to go through all those people in there. But if you have a massive budget of a few thousand dollars a day, like the accounts we work with, then you know we try to get an active and stay in that active range. So let's talk about now how you can get out of learning limited and into the active stage. So first off, you gotta understand that you need 50 conversion events. Now, Facebook recommends for us to drop back and do something like, you know, let's do landing page views. And it's nothing wrong with optimizing for LPV if you're trying to get, you know, just traffic. But if you want traffic that converts, then following this advice is just horrible. Do not do that. Do not optimize for something less than purchases to get those 50 conversion events because you're actually going to do way worse <laughs> than as if you were into a learning limited stage. And again, this is from working with hundreds of ad accounts, multiple e-commerce brands, all, all that good stuff to where we went through and we tested all these and we always performed way worse <laughs> optimizing for something other than purchases. Even if we were in that ratio right there of not getting 50 conversion events. We're not getting 50 conversion events, so let's optimize for something less and uh, other than purchase, optimize for something less than purchases and we perform way worse. So do not follow Facebook's advice of, hey, let's just optimize for landing page views or let's optimize for ads to carts or initiate checkouts or stuff like that because you're just gonna get very trash traffic and you're gonna perform way worse. I've still been able to scale ad accounts with learning limited. So that's why it's something that I don't really take too, too seriously 
but something I do have preventive measures to take to ensure that I can, you know, kind of bounce off of it in case I do hit it. So what can you do? So first off, you've got to make sure you're getting 50 conversion events. That's that's the number one thing. So yes, you do need to focus on ad copy, creative offer and stuff. You know, if you have really good performing ads, you're going to get a lower cost per purchase. You decrease cost per purchase, then you increase the amount of conversion events you get for your ad set. So that's, that's the first step. But let's just assume you took that particular action and then now you're still like, what else can I do? So when I look at people's ad accounts, they might have, you know, let's say an ABO campaign, whatever you might have. And you might have one ad set spending $10 a day, maybe one spending 20, maybe one spending five, and then let's say a $10 one. So you have multiple different ad sets. Let's just say this is a purchase 1%, website visitors 1%, uh, ATC 1%, and then maybe a view content 1%. So let's say for example, you're going through and you're testing you have all these different ad sets right here you're running and whether it's ABR or CBO, you know, you're, you're spending on average about, you know, $10 a day on your purchase, 1%, $20 a day on your website visitors, 1%, $5 on ATC, 1%, and then $10 on, um, what I have right there, uh, view content, 1%. So let's just say, for example, that's what you're spending on right there. You have four different ad sets. Well, the problem with this is purchase 1%, website visitors 1%, ATC 1%, view content 1%. These are all very high intent actions. So these are very high intent actions because they're all, you know, pixel on your website of the high intent. So a purchase is a very high intent action. That's something we want. Website visitors, they view website, they're more likely to buy from you than say they liked your Facebook page. Add to cart, that's a pretty serious and, you know, view content is pretty closely to website visitors. And what happens is, I'm gonna draw, you know, these circles right here. And you see how they kind of overlap a little bit. Well, what it is is one of these right here could be purchase, one could be website visitors, and one could be ATC. And these ad sets all overlap, you know, by a certain percentage. I've seen 40%, I've seen 60, I've seen 80%. So they overlap in a percentage with all these different audiences. So all of these ad sets are targeting different groups of people, but they have high overlap between all of them. You know, your purchase 1% it's not gonna be that much different between your ATC. You know, you're probably gonna have an 80% or 60% overlap. So what that basically means is you're targeting the same people just with different lookalike audiences. So what you can do is, is instead of going after, you know, purchase, website, visitors, ATC, is you can actually consolidate and group all these together. So to maximize our budget, so let's say if we're spending 10, 20, that's 30, 40, 45, let's just say we're spending $45 a day on this campaign and each ad set needs, you know, 50 conversion events per week, then what's gonna happen is right now, our budget is so diluted between all of these ad sets that it's hard for the algorithm to get those 50 conversion events sending us into learning phase. And because there's so much overlap between of them, it just doesn't make sense to keep running this particular structure right here. So what we're gonna do now is consolidate them. We're going to create a completely new audience and let's just call it, you know, $45 a day. I'm hoping you guys can see that. Yeah, so $45 a day. And let's just call it high intent, 1%. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the best performing of these. So maybe, you know, you look at this and stuff and you're like, all right, let's look at the last seven days of data and let's see which ones perform the best. So maybe our, um, let's see, maybe our website visitors one just completely sucked and our, you know, ATC completely sucked. But our purchase one and our view content one performed amazing. So let's do that. So those are two ad sets that performed amazing. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna funnel them all into this new ad set we're gonna create. We're gonna kill these two and we're gonna do the total daily budget of all of these. 
which is $45 a day. And we're gonna put them all into one ad set. So you're gonna essentially test a few different ad sets that are all likely, you know, like audiences. You can go inside the audience manager. You can select a few different audiences you're targeting and you can click on the show audience overlap and you can actually see the audience overlap between these. And when they have these high percentages of audience overlap, I do 20% plus anything with 20% or more of audience overlap. I like to go ahead and I like to combine those or test, see which ones perform better, kill the least, least performer, and then take the winners and put them into a single ad set. And what happens is this forces the algorithm to go ahead and push all that budget to that audience you know, these two audiences right there in one new ad set. This is kind of how a CBO campaign works because you'll go ahead and you'll put together a few different audiences and then the CBO campaign will go ahead and just push all that budget to whatever ones performs the best. It doesn't even worry about the other ones. And this helps out with getting out of the learning phase as well. So consolidate the winners of like audiences. Remember, I don't want to put high intent audience right there and have like interest in there. No, I want high intent, high level, conversion events in there. So now we have this new audience right there and we're more likely to get out of the learning limited because we consolidate it, what doesn't work and what does work, or we consolidate what works and we got rid of what doesn't. We put them in one ad set right there. So now instead of you know the budget by being diluted between a few different ad sets, it's all being forced into one or you know maybe a CBO campaign right there and it's you know it's pushing through right there. So that's how you do it with lookalike audiences. You can do this exact same thing with interests, except what you want to do is there's a little inspect tool, you know, right by your ad set. That's probably horrible right there, but there's a little inspect tool on your ad set. So say these were all interests, you can see, all right, which interest is performing the best. Then let's look at the last seven days of data and let's hit that inspect tool. And let's see which ones are showing audience competition. We're gonna turn off the ones that are competing with our best performer. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let that one best performer run. Just let it run for a few more days. We'll bump up that budget. And that's when it gives out that, you know, get us into that 50 conversion events per week area to where we get out of learning limited for that particular one. So that's one way to get out of learning limited. You know, cut off what doesn't work. Go ahead, put together like audiences together of high intent. So like we can even do a social engagement 1% where I put, you know, my Facebook engagement, my IG engagement, my video views, all my social stuff. I put all that in together into an ad set sometimes for social engagement 1% after I test them and then I, you know, consolidate them and put them into one ad set. So that's one way how to get off learning limited. Now let's look at the other way. And that is, you know, diving into your retargeting campaigns. So retargeting with learning limited. So let's do retargeting. So inside of retargeting campaigns, you might have a IG engagement. Let's do $5 IG engagement. And you know, let's just say that's 60 days. And then you might have a, another ad set, $5 FB engage, you know, 60 days. And then maybe a $5 uh, video views, 75% VB 60 day. So you might have in a retargeting campaign, this is more for your MoFu. So let's just say MoFu. So this might be your MoFu campaign right here, where you have a $5 ad set for IG engagement, $5 ad set for FB engagement, and a $5 a day for video views. So it's your MoFu, you have three different ad sets. And what's happening right here is the same exact thing. Your budget's being diluted, but these audiences are all similar. You know, all these audiences are very similar in the nature of what there are. They're social engagement, they're warm audiences. People that maybe liked one of your posts, commented on one of your ads, go on ahead, liked your Facebook page, watched one of your videos. They're all warm to the brand, but we may, we know they're not high intent audiences yet because we you know we're running exclusions on all of these that's excluding website visitors, excluding purchases and all that stuff. So they're really very warm audiences. So now what we can do to get out of the 50, you know, get inside of 50 conversion events is simply combine them all. Very simple. You know, this one, it's a little harder if you're targeting to get out of that learning limited because you have to scale up your front end to, to scale up your retargeting. You can't scale up your retargeting when you know, you're know you not spending that much on your top of funnel. So it's very hard to scale up your retargeting, but what you can do is you can combine ad sets and it's been performing extremely well for us. I mean, just crazy ROAS now because we're basically giving Facebook a big pool of people 
of like, you know, their, their consumer behavior at this stage right here and understanding where they're at in the buying process. We're giving Facebook those people and they're all very similar. So Facebook's performing extremely well because we're giving them a big pool of people and we're hitting them with the right message. So what we'll do is we'll simply just combine. So now we'll have a $15 a day ad set and we just call it social engagement. That's what I like to call it. And this is a 60 day. So there we go. That's simply all you do. You combine them and then you have a $15 a day social engagement, 60 days. So that's literally all you do for retargeting. You can do the same thing with Bofu. I have an ad set that view content 14 days plus add to cart 28 days uh, for Bofu. And this, I mean, just performs extremely well because we're consolidating stuff that works already. And we're giving that particular ad set more budget. So on a day that the 75% is doing really well for video views, then you know, it's, it's spending more on that inside of this ad set. So recommend trying it. <laughs> it performs really well. And this is all ways to get out of the learning limited phase because you're, you're combining and you're maximizing budget. So, you know, now we have one asset with $15 a day versus three different ad sets, each getting $5 a day because to get off learning limits that you have to have each ad set or an ad set has to get 50 conversion events. So if you're getting 50 conversion events for, you know, the 75% right here at $5 a day per week, you're not going to get, you know, it's not like the whole campaign gets out of learning limits and it's only that one that gets that active status and you'll keep reaching new people. Uh, retargeting is a little different because you're not really reaching new people. You're only retargeting people that has already, con you know, <laughs> has entered the funnel, but it's still, we've seen improvements right there. So just quickly recap, you know, cough, it doesn't work, consolidate, look at audience overlaps and you can identify audiences with high overlap. So that way you can combine, simply combine them in a single ad set. Uh, that's an improved performance. And then, you know, again, if you're doing a lot of interest and stuff, try to identify the one or two major interests that are performing extremely well. If they are have, or if they are very like, you then combine them in a single ad set. You can also look at the inspect tool to look at the last seven days of data, look at auction competition, kill off the things that's competing with your ad set. So that way you can give it more budget and kill off stuff that doesn't work. Now, if you are currently spending over a thousand dollars a day on paid advertising and you're looking to get some additional feedback on your account and stuff of how you can continue to grow it and scale it and stuff. Uh, click the link below to book a call with me and my team. We've helped multiple brands go over scale past the 400 to $500,000 per month in revenue. And we would love to help you out with your business of, you know, identifying what route you can take to quickly grow. And if you enjoyed this channel, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every other day, very similar to this one. Well, guys, it's about that time. My name is Nick Terrio. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.